My name is Greeno Novakoski. I'm today's guest host for Organic Politics. I'm here with William Spademan and John Root. And we're going to talk about something very interesting, a newfangled way of exchanging goods and services. I'm really excited to get to know these gentlemen and hear what they have to say about our credits. Would you like to start, William? What brings you to this topic? Greeno, it's great to be here with you today. Uh, our Credits has been my passion and my work for the last dozen years, uh, along with John and several other people. And uh, I'm very excited to tell you about it, what it is and why it's important. John? Well, I discovered William when I decided that the only thing that would make any difference in how the world really works is to have our own bank that we the people ran. And I was racking my head, how am I going to go about it? And one of the members of my group said, uh, I heard about the Common Good Bank on the radio. So I went to the web and I entered Common Good Bank and up came this amazing website and there was somebody who absolutely understood why who creates the money is so important. And that was in 2009 and I've been working with William ever since. So we're talking about something other than cash money and something other than using credit cards? Yes, we are. All right. Start from the beginning. How does it work? How does it work? That's a good place to start. Um, on the face of it, our credits works like a bank account with a connected local debit or credit card. Um, Is that what I see here? This is John's R Credits card, which we call an R card. And he can use this for at participating businesses to buy goods and services just like he would use a credit card or a debit card. Okay. Um, so in practical terms, what you do is you open an R Credits account, you put some money in it, some US dollars from your bank account, or you trade some cash for R Credits. Okay. Um, and then you can spend them using your card. You can spend the R credits. You can spend the R credits, right. Uh, so as, essentially you're, you're trading your U.S. dollars for R credits that you can then spend using your, your card. But it feels to you like you're just putting some U.S. dollars in and you're spending the U.S. dollars. Yeah, how is okay. it not actually... Well, what happens when you, when you put some money into your account is that money goes into escrow. It goes into a, what we call the R Credits escrow account, and it just sits there. And okay. instead, we give you points, you know, R Credits, okay. we call them, which is just an entry in the database keeping track of how much credit you have in your account. And then when you buy something with your card, it transfers that much... Uh, that many R credits from your account to the business's account. R credits account. Right, the business's R credits account. Good. I have lots and lots of questions. Okay. What does the R stand for? Is it significant? And how, if I put $20 in, do I, am I limited to 20 points? Am I limited to my $20? Does it grow? Good how? questions. The R stands for our. It's supposed to sound like our credits. Okay. Uh, it also -U -R. stands for O U R, but we spell it with a little R okay. and a capital C for our credits. Um, but it also stands for renewable, uh, revolutionary, and uh, rebel. Rebel. Okay. Okay. Um, now the question about does it grow? Uh, maybe we should start. We can get back at to the that beginning and take it one step at a time. Okay. What happens when you, when you uh, make a purchase is you are limited to the amount of R credits that are in your account, mm -hmm. but the system gives you incentive rewards for participating. So as soon as you make your first purchase mm -hmm. with your R card, mm -hmm. you get a, 
a bonus of $20 worth of R credits that's just added into your account. That sounds very good. And every time you make a purchase, you get 10% of that purchase amount added into your account as a, an incentive reward for making a purchase with R credits. Where does that money come from? Great question. You want to take that? Well, uh, uh, John, yeah. Yeah, the, the, this is the, the key question. Um, when you put $20 or $100, usually it's around $100, you put $100 into the system. It goes into an escrow account. So what we do is we create $100 worth of R credits and put that in your R credits account. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? That came from the whole idea. That came from the community. That came from the agreement that we're not going to use the dollars for the trade. We're going to use the dollars as the unit of value, so we know how much value we're talking about, right? Everybody knows what a dollar's worth. And, you know, dollars inflate and all that, but everybody knows what they can buy with the dollars. So we'll use that as a unit of value. We'll leave the means of exchange in the escrow account. Okay. And we'll use our credits to affect the exchanges. And we'll decide what it, we as a community we as the participants in the systems or the members of the system, we'll decide what to issue our credits for, what to create them for. So let's initially, in order to get everything up and running, let's create them as an incentive. Let's give you an incentive for inviting someone. Let's give you an incentive for, and we will just create them on the basis of our agreement and our understanding that this would be a good thing and would benefit everyone who participates. That's what it's all about, benefiting everyone who participates. If you think about it, the, the uh, value of our credits being based on our agreement to accept them is the same as any other money. Money is worth something because you can get something for it. And with the U.S. dollar, you can get something for it because the law says you have to accept U.S. dollars in exchange for your goods and services. In the Over case the of course credits, of history, it used to be glass beads or cocoa beans were yes, a means of exchanging exactly. goods. And they were worth something as money because people, people decided. would give you something for them. People decided that they would accept them. So with our credits, they're worth something because we all agree to accept them as payment for our goods and services. Now I and that's want... why we can create them, is because we have agreed to accept them. Okay. Now, I want things because I'm a person out there buying things. I also have some services that I could supply, but first I'm talking as a consumer. It makes sense to me that I'm in agreement with others who are using our credits. What's in it for the person who is supplying plumbing or stationary or apples or... Right. We didn't get to that point. It's not just the person who is buying something gets incentive rewards. Right. The person who is accepting them also gets incentive rewards. In fact, it's, uh, currently it's the same amount. Uh, when incentive you, when you rewards. Use, when you use your R card to right. make a purchase, uh, let's say you spend $100 at your local grocery store, um, and you pay with your R card, you get a $10 incentive reward for that purchase, and the business gets a $10 incentive reward. So I've for that used purchase. 100, but now I have 10. Yes. Whereas Excellent. I started with 100. Yeah. But I don't have 110. No, because you spent it. Because I spent 100. I have to say, remember a few years back? all the issues with real estate and inflated loan, you know, all this credit out there. Are we using the same idea for positive purposes? Because it's based on a mutual agreement? Yeah, that's... Help me see how, how do we get beyond the incentive place? How does it continue in five years. Where yeah, is so the short, yeah. the short uh, story on the incentives is that they are designed to help us 
get from where we are now to where the system is flourishing. They are um, an incentive for people to participate in order for the system to get to be the size where it could be a, a reasonable replacement for our current economy. Yeah. Okay. That's the objective. And, okay. And the important thing to understand about that is that we're designing a payment system that we expect and will continue to develop and design to benefit everyone. So that it isn't just benefiting the banks, it isn't just benefiting uh, the wealthy or whatever, it's, be it's doing what we as a community decide it should do. And that's the power of money creation. So there'll come a point when it doesn't make any sense to keep incentivizing every transaction. Right. There'll come a point when it's much more important to incentivize something that we want to see happen. So then we let's stop all the transaction incentives Right? And let's concentrate our ability to create money responsibly without causing inflation, without mm -hmm. you know, any mm -hmm. of those m managing the money supply problems that banks run into. Uh, and let's incentivize something that we all agree would really benefit us, w would be for the common good. Let's go back to that. Okay. Let's go back to that time when our credits are being used by so many people that there's extra in order to fund something beyond what people are exchanging regularly? Right. Is that the concept? Yes, yeah. and that's, that's really what John is explaining here is, is the point of our credits. Everything that we've talked about before and how it works is just a way of getting to that point so that we can have an economy that is community-based, and democratic, that's, that we the people uh, can, can look at and make decisions about for our mutual benefit. Is there somebody like a banker who's getting the information from a exchange? You use your card, it gets recorded somewhere in the computer world. Somebody is looking at that? and keeping track of it? Yes, in fact, uh, the R credit system is designed to be transparent mm -hmm. because we want everybody to be looking at it. And that's part of uh, what comes with uh, economic democracy is the responsibility to watch and think about what's going on. So, so I so can go onto a site and see what's happening with R credits throughout the area? Yes. Yes, we have uh, graphs and summaries of, of the economic activity that's happening every day. Right. You can't see individual transactions because mm -hmm. we do preserve our privacy from a okay. certain point of view, but you can certainly see the effect in the aggregate of what we're doing, what's going on with the system. So to, to my mind, the, if we're thinking about designing something that will really work, there are two things that are really important. It has to have the potential to change everything, at least from my point of view. It has to have that potential. But it can't be so problematic and difficult and new that it... So it's totally integrated into the existing system. You're, when you sign up, you sign an agreement, right? You're making this agreement on purpose, understanding what you're doing. I understand that we can create credit. We can honor each other's credit. If we're going to honor each other's credit, it should be a trust relationship. It should be in a trusted community. Can you define credit right now as part of this process? I would say that credit is the right to goods and services, to have goods and services or acquire them. Okay. It's also okay. Um, the... the the idea of credit is really built into our whole system. You have a credit score that the banks use to decide how reliable you are, mm -hmm. how, you know, how capable are you of earning the money that you need in mm -hmm. order to do whatever it is that you need mm -hmm. to do, including paying back the bank. So, so credit has something to do with your standing, mm -hmm. and it has something to do with your honor in a way. And what's happened is that it's totally conflated into the monetary system. And the element of trust 
is got everybody's trying to game the system, or everybody's tempted at least to game the system. Most of us don't, but banks certainly game the system. They inflate the the housing market, and then they crash it, and there are all kinds of things going on that we don't understand are completely a function of the monetary system. When there's a uh, a boom, it's a it's simply a function of expanding credit. You know, you expand mm -hmm. the credit, it's mm -hmm. easier to get, and you can borrow more money, and you get a boom. Tighten up the credit, you get a recession. The business cycle is purely a monetary phenomenon. And consumers and producers don't decide when those booms happen. Bankers do. Banks do, yeah. In our credits, who decides? Well, the who decides when we're done with incentive? The, when we're strong enough to go beyond the incentives. That's the whole thing. One of the things in the agreement that you make when you join our we credits, should find out. The, the agreement is that you're going to participate. So you understand what we're doing. You agree to behave ethically. There are details. You're always going to price your goods and services the same in our credits as you do in dollars. No discounting, no, yeah. So it's always going to stay on par. Right? We take care of the inflating of the dollar by creating a little extra R credits to take care of the inflation. So R credits will maintain the value because we'll give you a little extra every month to represent the inflation in the dollar. Mm -hmm. So there comes a moment when we need to sit down together, all the participants in a particular area, and decide together what it is that would benefit everybody, would, would promote the common good. So, by virtue of having a card, you or me, the card holder, is invited to this meeting. Absolutely. Yes. And you say once a month? Well, we have no idea. Yeah. I mean, we might have to meet every day when everybody's, you know, flush and, and we don't have, we only have to work a few hours a week, right? <laughs> then we, we might, we might have so much to do and we might be so excited we'll be meeting every day. In the meantime, Would we meet knows? online? We can do that too. See, what we're working on, as well as the payment system, is the participatory, inclusive, consensus-building, decision-making process. Representative democracy is not working for us. Our representatives not do not represent us. Ask anybody. Is Congress doing what you want Congress to do? No, it's not. Well, if we sit down together and we ask each other, what do we really want? What would benefit everybody? What would promote the common good? And we have the power to fund what we agree we value? then you see the potential of our credits to change everything. The world would soon reflect what we together agree we value. Sounds, sounds revolutionary. That's why so it's... How do we build this is, it? This is what we're it? working towards, is we yeah. need to get... We're not there yet. ...a certain no. mass of, uh, you know, a certain threshold of uh, numbers of people participating and we also need those people who are participating to have a certain level of understanding of what's going on so that we can make good decisions together about our economy and therefore about our community's destiny. Um, it, we have a long way to go with that. And some of what we're doing now, as well as just recruiting more people to sign up, uh, which we do by invitation. Uh, any member can invite anyone to join. Mm -hmm. They need to trust them. Yes. We're building a community of trust. And the trust um, is based on an assessment that that well, person has similar values? Well, no. The, the, the statement goals. you're asked to sign is simple. It's just that uh, if I lent this person $250, I would trust him to pay it back. That's all we ask people to state when they invite someone. Um, but it, it, I wanted to say, as well as just inviting more people and getting more people involved and more businesses uh, involved, we've been working on designing educational materials and uh, educational programs that will bring people up to speed on how it works and why it works and why it's important so that we all under, come to a, a greater understanding together about where we're going um, so people that we can get to that point. People are pretty attached to their money. Yeah, yeah. true. I was describing our credits to someone 
And she said, John, I don't want you messing with my money. I know how it works. Oh, except, so we're, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we have a big challenge. The interesting thing about the challenge is that there isn't anything about it that you and I and anyone else can't do. Because we all talk to people, we all have friends, we all have relatives, we all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And by participating and having the experience, you're not sharing just an idea, you're sharing your experience. So I walk into the co-op with my R card and I buy with the R card and people look and they see what's going on, so I strike up a conversation. And pretty soon we find somebody that we know in common and we're off and running. So that's the, 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 the challenge is big. How do we get this to a scale where it really makes a difference? But there isn't anything about it that requires somebody else except what we're able to do in our relationships with each other. We don't need anybody's permission. We don't right. need anyone's permission. This was permission. really crucial because we've designed our credits to be not just a destination system, right? It's not just our vision of how the economy could work in an ideal world. It's also designed as the uh, appropriate transition system that will take us from here to there. How do you get teens involved? We don't know. <laughs> we do have some teenagers we do, involved. We do. You know, it's, I mean, because we, we, any good community has diversity. Yes. Yes. And, and I, I think it's the same, um, it, it's a more general question is how do we get particular communities involved mm -hmm. and I, I think the answer to that is we get some of them involved and then they get more people involved mm -hmm. right so in the case of teenagers what we've found with the few we have is that they largely invite each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also need more businesses that appeal to uh, youngsters for example it would be good to have a game store and a movie theater and you know whatever else youngsters like to buy it's important to have those businesses involved and we're currently we're focusing on the food systems okay right which is the the biggest uh, uh, what uh, lowest denominator for what everybody everybody eats yes everybody, yeah, everybody eats. eats and so we're starting there but we intend to expand very soon to these other branches of the economy that will appeal to specific markets like youngsters. Okay. But, but it's important to say that it isn't as though we know the answer to everything. We need all the people who have the answers to come and join us and to help out. And those teenagers, as William pointed out, those teenagers who do join, they do then talk to, other, or to, talk to others. And we go out, we help them to go after the businesses where they buy. And they'll need to and tell us where those they businesses need to tell are. Us, right? Yeah. And we need to help them or not. Sometimes teenagers are perfectly capable entirely on their own. And yes. we are always very happy when those initiatives yeah, happen. Yeah, some of them have actually been going to the businesses where they want to buy things and saying, will you take our credits? And this is exactly what oh, needs to yeah. happen. That, that's, a customer would be the best advocate Mm -hmm. of a new payment system for a business. Yeah. Um, how geographically influenced is an R-Credit system? You gentlemen are from not Vermont. Yes, well this is a, a very exciting time uh, for that particular subject because uh, just on April 1st we launched our second pilot community. Uh, we started in just Greenfield, Massachusetts and surrounding communities. And on April 1st, we launched in Ann Arbor, Michigan as well. Okay. Uh, so Greenfield and, and the idea Mass is, is, yes. has, has a group of people with these We've cards. We've been doing it in Greenfield for about a year and a half, something like that. Yeah. Uh, or maybe it's two years now. Anyway, we've run two pilots in and Greenfield. Let me, and, and let me go back. And Ann Arbor, Michigan. Just They're starting just on starting. April 1st of this just year. Just starting. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, what's exciting about this is that we've designed this system uh, so that any community can adopt it easily using the software, which is open source software, um, and uh, be independent of the other communities, but be able to interact with the other communities. Interact in what way? Economically, to Economically. buy things from each other. Okay, okay. Right, so, so, let's so a go community back, can start... Because I want to make sure our listeners are getting all these great details. Okay. So there are people... And we want more details. There are people in Greenfield, Mass, 
and the surrounding area that are using our credits. P consumers and businesses. Yes. And now Ann Arbor is starting. Yes. But if people in Bellows Falls or people in Springfield, Vermont or Brattleboro, Vermont wanted to start this, they could go where and how? Well, there actually already is a very exciting project uh, to start our credits in the Brattleboro and Putney area. Okay. So we have a group which we've called Bene, Benefit Everyone in the Northeast or in New England. Bene, good in Italian, because we're all so uh, excited. Uh, we meet every Wednesday evening at 6.30 at um, the, uh, in, next to the old stone, stone church on Grove Street in, okay. in Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten to the place where we are now strategizing and developing the plan for introducing our credits. And that all began with the seminar that Emily invited me to the host of, the normal host of Organic Politics, invited me to do in Brattleboro. And out of that grew a group. And so that group, which is regularly attended by 10 people at least, uh, sometimes more, once in a while a little bit less, they are at that point where we would like people to join the group. So Wednesday evening, 6.30, 5 Grove Street, Brattleboro, Vermont. Okay. There's a lot more to talk about this, and I hope you'll join us for part two soon. Thank you, John Root, and thank you, William Spademan. Thank, thank you, you to our listeners. Join us for part two very soon.